Welcome to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as we build products in public. Each episode gives you an honest peek into our lives as we share our struggles, our wins, and everything in between. I'm Benedict, and I'm feeling excited. And I'm Benedicta. Today is October 1st. This is episode number 209, and I'm also feeling excited. Woohoo! The Woo! excitement is overwhelming. Good, good vibes <laughs> all around! Yay! <laughs> Yay! So I know why you're excited, because you're about to go on a boat and spend the rest of the day there, I guess, or maybe even the rest of the week? No, just two nights. But it's actually two not nights. why I'm that excited. That's just like ah, normal okay, life. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a tradition um, by now, but uh, I'm pretty excited because we are a Framer plugin launch partner. And by we, I mean Outsera. And nice. uh, if everything goes according to Framer's plans, uh, it should be out and available to the public when when you listen to this. So cool. that's pretty cool. And it's a little, like, I'm amazed by what Framer is able to do. Like, I don't know the engineering behind it. I mean, there are some rough edges, but like, it's just like, totally, it's like a completely different and this is the words I can't say. Paradig paradigm? Par paradigm. Paradigm. Okay. Paradigm. Um, in like thinking about building websites. Like they've really taken, I feel like they really understood and actually made kind of the the component driven. Like I think Netlify now has their conference. It's called like Compose. Like you can com you create a site with components. And with Framer, it's all components and it just like looks great on the screen. You like drag and drop stuff. You can add a little code um, by adding code around the component uh, with what they call code overrides. And then you can create custom components that you can throw on the canvas and then they render on the canvas. And it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. I don't, I don't understand how that, like it, how it can even work. Um, it also feels like a little bit like the Wild West. Because, <laughs> you know, the, the best practices and the patterns and, and stuff hasn't really maybe landed completely. Um, mm -hmm. And it's pretty open now. You can just, like, import from any URL on the web. That's, like, their package management. Oh, interesting. That... <clears throat> Yes. So, okay. I. Mm, <laughs> yeah. I can see some problems, but whatever. <laughs> but like with every other tool, where that lets you extend with right. code. Like if you start throwing custom code on there, you are responsible for the custom code. So, yeah. But if you, dear listener, know how to just package stuff and throw it on a URL, which I think should be a lot easier than creating an NPM package, but my head just cannot like wrap around like how I do that. Um, holler at me. Uh, I think I could do it like once, but I just want to like some kind of best practices about how around how like versioning, how should I structure this URL for versioning? How can I automate this with a GitHub action like I do with my NPM packages? Stuff like that. I just I just like need a little like lifesaver article. Some guardrails. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, makes sense. Um, um but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um and I've been working on this plugin for quite a while. And in the beginning, like just very like long like lo lots of calendar time in between. And then it's been like slowly ramping up. But because I have this fractional life now, I haven't been able to work on it like for a week. And I was like, oh, I really should just like get like a full weekend. But turns out slow and steady really is the way. And I, <laughs> having like five or six days in between or like four days in between going back to the code, like it, I ended up simplifying so much from like my original, you know, my first go at the different things that I was trying to make. And I think if I'd had that week, like I would have just pull, pushed through and been like, okay, I'm just going to keep on with this pattern. I'm just going to keep on with this train of thought. But like having the time and space to, to just like not look at it and like really <clears throat> completely not really think about it because I've been working on other projects. Um, every time I went back to it, it's gotten like better conceptually. And, and that's just, it's been really nice to, 
truly experience because I, you know, I've had the theory <laughs> that that's how it goes. And, and I want to like take that into other projects as well, that it's okay to like give it a break and then you don't have to push things right away. Like you, you know, you can let it sit for a while. Um, and uh, yeah. And then even like one day last week where I was like, okay, I need to get this through because there was a new API update that came through. And I was like, oh, that would make things a lot better for us, for our little app. And, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it, but I was like, think about it and think about it, thinking about it. And I was like, but I have to get it down. Like we're done. We're closing in on the deadline because, you know, the deadline was Friday at like end of day Pacific time, uh, or it was Mm -hmm. Thursday, end of day Pacific time. And I was like, crank, I was like, I got to get this done. And then I realized, and I tweeted this, I said, it's like a story in trip about breaks in three parts. So I, um, I realized that I, we, I was on parenting duty at the marching band practice at school, which means I had to go up there and just like sit there and like be the other adult in the room. Uh, and then I was like, trying like marching band is my thing. Like I am responsible for marching band, but I was like, well, uh, like I really, you know, I mm-hmm. need to work on this thing. And he was like, really though, really? And I was like, okay, I'll do it. It's my responsibility. But I was like, oh, I can't because I really need to figure this out. Um, so I pack up everything. I get on the bus and like halfway to Lillian's school. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's how and, like I wrote it down in my little notebook. And then when I got back, like it took a while to execute, but I don't think I would have gotten there if I hadn't had to like go to, <laughs> to marching band practice. Um, and it was like 15 minutes, 15 minutes into this bus ride. I was like, ah, okay. And I know this. And I know other people know this, but we still, at least most people I talk to, we still convince ourselves that like, well, we just, we just need to give it that crunch time or we're like, we need to just like keep, it's like, it feels like it's light around the corner. And then every time a break is the thing to do, or like a walk, not just a break, don't scroll social media, but like a physical break. And I know it. But it's still hard to do it, right? <laughs> it's, I need to start having these, if then, you know, if this, then that in my brain. I've started doing that for social media scrolling. As soon as I start noticing I'm like scrolling and like just looking around, I have this, like, I just have to get up and walk away from the desk. Like, that's my only, like, if this, then that. And that's been helpful. But at this time, I wasn't really procrastinating doing other things. I just wasn't moving forward in my like thought process. Um, so I needed to manage to make some kind of if this, then that like recipe in my head. Because you need to take these decisions away from yourself. True, true. <laughs> feel, yeah, feel yeah. like Stop, a child. Like, yeah. But yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah, I had, happen. Yeah, I had something similar happen. I had something similar happen last week. And I was like, um, so maybe for context, we're currently working on getting company triggers in our in our um, workflow builder. So we already have company triggers for our um, traditional campaigns, um, and in theory, I could just like port what we do there into the the workflow builder. Uh, but sometime last year, we figured out a way to do basically all our triggers just in SQL in the database. Um, and that's how, we, like, that's what we use on the on the workflows. And uh, the company triggers, basically, they're a little bit different in terms of, like, previously, when a user does something, we check, does this match, and then we start the workflow for this particular user. But for the company triggers... We usually want it to be like the company does something like signs up for a trial or whatever. And then we want to start the workflow for all users in the company or a subset of those users in the company. So the old code was like just checking does the company match and then was basically iterating over the list of users in the company. Um, but I wanted to do the same thing just in SQL, like basically send a query to the database and then get a list of instances back that needs to be started like doesn't even care what it is just like get a list back and start the workflow for that list and we've been thinking about this for the past year or so (laughs) and it was only 
last week when we attempted to like there was one piece of code in particular that has some limitations that wouldn't allow us to do it just like that and i tried to refactor this a couple of times and gave it another try last week and got it done in an hour or so and it just worked and then on top of that adding the adding the actual company triggers or at least the proof of concept of the company triggers like was similar like that i stopped working that day uh, went down prepped dinner had some food uh, starting uh, watching tv and then in the middle of like just watching stuff i was like huh <laughs> i think i've got an idea <laughs> I went upstairs in my office again, uh, sat down for like 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And it just worked. It was done. Um, still needs more polish, but it's, it's yeah, was was like that. Like, just like not thinking about it. And then suddenly you get that ding and you get the idea. It's it's so cool. And I know we talked about it so many times, but it's just like, I need yeah. to harp on it to get myself to realize that because life just is so much nicer when you get up off the desk and like actually making that like, this is good for business. This is good for, you know, the, the yeah, the business or the code or whatever. Like, it's not me procrastinating. It's like, you need to get up, maybe fold some clothes, walk around the neighborhood, to like do something else and just like let it churn in the in the back of your head yep and trying to like capture that trigger where it's like this is the trigger that gets me up and out and and just letting that thing happen and or letting the brain do its magic i guess is, yes is <laughs> yeah but it's going to be fun now then to see because we go, you know, we're launching or I mean, Framer is launching um, plugins and um, we'll see how it fares. Uh, it's been hard uh, getting kind of user testing for this because you have to get a, you need to be, need to be approved for beta and this and that. Mm -hmm. And I saw now I realized maybe more people had access than I thought. But anyway, it's going to be battle tested <clears throat> in the next <laughs> <laughs> next week. And I will be on a sailboat when it actually releases. So if something <laughs> goes down, I'm going to bring a charged <laughs> I'm going to bring a charged laptop, but we'll, we'll see how, um, how much I <laughs> You're can on do. a timer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix that, but I only have like six hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> six hours of battery. Um, luckily, though, I mean, we're just going to be in the Oslo Fjord, so there's like coverage, like cell phone coverage is not a problem. So I can do support probably just from my phone and mm -hmm. and, nice. and from the computer. And also, I, I don't know how many people will actually, because our plugin will require you to create an outset account and like it's right i don't think like a hundred people are going to jump on doing that over the next 24 hours like after the, the the launch i do think we have some like we'll have a little bit of a trickle and then maybe you know more people um but yeah. it's important to be there I mean, in the beginning yeah totally i mean definitely helps with like getting recognized or like just being there in the early days right and there's probably less competition in the in the marketplace at oh this we're point, 20 right? lunch partners so yeah like i mean that's <laughs> that's that's a nice list i guess and there's probably not a direct competitor in that list uh, oh we well. are there are like three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well but still i mean right. three is no, not 20 it, uh competitors no but it's whatever. also good because it shows because you know, because Framer doesn't have any sort of authentication or protection of content, mm -hmm. um, and um, having three version or like three different plugins doing similar things, it also shows that it's possible, right? More than just right. having one, and maybe people like check out the different ones, and and um, we have a little bit of a <clears throat> advantage that we are more of a complete solution. And then we're also on a mm -hmm. disadvantage because we haven't coded that much specifically for Framer because we don't want to be, um, you know, maintaining React, up, you know, components and Framer components right. and Vite components. And so sure. we, we, um, we are not as like smooth. It doesn't look as good in the editor as some of the others. Um, but it will be fun to see how many people actually use it yeah. use it and if it's like worth the investment to build this plugin but for me it's been a lot of fun it's been fun That's just creating good. a react application 
with wheat and none of the other nonsense um, you usually use. Nice. But what are you excited about? You were also excited. I kind of just like jumped in because I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I am excited about the progress on company triggers because it feels like for the first time in quite a while that we are like super close to making it work. Um, and actually, yeah, tests are passing already, at least the, the, the handful of tests I wrote and it needs some more polish, I guess, and some more testing and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm excited about like getting this out there because it's the last thing that the workflows can't do compared to the linear campaigns. And once mm -hmm. that thing is out, like they're in all aspects superior to the linear campaigns, and we're actually thinking about retiring or like deprecating linear campaigns. Ooh. So that will be interesting and exciting. Uh, the other thing I'm excited about is I am leaving for MicroConf Europe in a couple of days. Woo! And Jealous. I'm very much looking forward to meeting a lot of old friends and um, meeting a lot of people for the first time that I've met online in the past, but never never met in person. And of, of course, like meeting new people that I still don't know about but uh yeah it's usually a lot of fun and um i'm looking forward to it a lot so can't wait for this to happen yeah that's the two things i'm excited about i guess didn't you release yeah. an open source library yes i uh, yes <laughs> not excited about that <laughs> well that was two weeks ago like who cares <laughs> who cares <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff happened since we last talked. Um, I think last time we recorded an episode, I was just about to leave for um, Dublin for Emberfest. Um, so that happened, and it was it was pretty great. Like, I didn't have any <laughs> didn't have any expectations, and uh, was mostly going there because Leo, our front end developer, was um, well for one was attending, but also just attending turned into giving a talk um and because he's in brazil it was a nice opportunity to just like meet and meet in person for the first time how tall in was three he? years um <laughs> not as tall as i expected he was shorter <laughs> than i expected <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's always that's always the funny thing right um i think was it i think I, when i met you i was like yep yeah, you're about to size I, I imagined uh, you to be. Yeah, that was funny. But other than that, like it's always like, oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like the conference was um, the conference was pretty great. Uh, it was relatively small. I think like maybe eighty or ninety people, mm -hmm. uh, but it had a very open, like it was very open and welcoming, and you could literally talk to anyone, and it was never weird. Um, and that's honestly, that was a first for me on at a tech conference, because I feel like microconf is that way, like, but it, I don't consider microconf a tech conference. Um, but, um, yeah, like it was great just being able to talk to everyone. Um, and we had a good time there. Um, Leo, as I mentioned, um, did a talk on how we built the UI side of the workflow builder. Um, that was pretty great as well. Um, he spent a lot of time polishing the talk. Uh, we were joking. It was probably one of the most expensive talks user list ever did. Because <laughs> 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 he spent I'm so much time on it. it. But um, it was well worth the effort. Um, it went very well. Uh, it was live streamed. Um, and it will be on YouTube in a couple of weeks, I guess. Mm -hmm. So i um, happy to share it once it's out there. Um, yeah, and it was funny. We had, uh, one of our competitors was there as well and they did the talk as well. And I, like when they gave their talk, we were like, uh-huh, mm -hmm, I know exactly what you're talking about. We are facing the exact same challenge. And uh, it's interesting to see how you solve that particular <laughs> And I, I wonder if they had the same experience in, in Leo's talk. I, I guess they did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it was great. Um, I am honestly more excited to be using Ember than I was before. Um, I'm still a little bit like, 
worried that eventually the community will fizzle out because mm -hmm. admittedly um it's not like i feel like everyone is dismissing ember at this point because it's been around for like is it 14 years or something like that basically it's been around f since forever and everyone assumes um everyone assumes that it's outdated and like legacy but there's actually a lot of innovation happening and st things are moving forward and you mentioned wheat earlier <laughs> ember's finally going to be able to be built with wheat in the next couple of months so that's that's exciting and looking forward to that and yeah i think the communities in general are pushing the boundaries of the platform like the web as a platform which is exciting to see so yeah we're excited and um actually considering to contribute more as well like um i guess i guess we realized that if we were worried about the community fizzling out or something like that it's time for us to just contribute more and like be, <laughs> be a bigger part of the community and i think that's yeah. what we're going to do moving forward we actually have yeah. a live listener who is saying that they're uh, looking forward for the workflow to become an Ember add-on. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur Sosa. Yeah, that's Leo's brother who was there as well. So, oh, hi. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it will ever, like, I well, well who knows, yeah. but, like, I don't think it will ever be an Ember add-on because I mm -hmm. guess the... The audience for this is like five companies or something like that. <laughs> and they're all your competitors. <laughs> and they're all our competitors. Yeah. Um, so who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, like but, we're yeah. currently looking at like just contributing more to the framework itself. I've been thinking about your workflows because I, I'm, I've had to become more familiar with Make, which was Integromat before. In mm -hmm. Yeah. Integromat, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think you built you built some sort of integration with them, right? Um, at some point, I, we never did, but uh, no, we okay. looked at it in the yeah. past. But like back in the Integromat days, it was super difficult to get an integration yeah. going with them. Yeah, I don't know how it is now because I haven't been working on integrations with them. But uh, a lot of the backend stuff in We um, is is done with Make scenarios, mm -hmm. and you know, as a developer, secretly been hating on it because it's like you go in there <laughs> and there's no version control and you feel all it of those things that developers yep. feel about, um, you know, low code or no code. But the other day it was like, oh, we should really be listening to Stripe payment <clears throat> events because that was not really set up with we before I arrived. Or there was like a little bit, but we didn't really know we didn't capture the failed payments and mm -hmm. uh, we still don't do much more than capture them. Uh, but we've started setting up an SMS flow because we have the number for every customer because that's how they log in. So we have like valid um, phone numbers for everyone. So we thought, okay, let's set up a little flow that sends you an SMS on your fourth failed attempt. And then their fifth, sixth and seventh and eighth failed attempt, you will get an <laughs> SMS. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty, you know, as a developer felt like sizable, sizable mm -hmm. feature. Uh, but then I was like, oh, these make scenarios. And I went in there and oh my God, I had a Stripe event listener done in like less than a minute because Make will actually create a webhook endpoint in Stripe for you and then create a scenario attached to that for you. And you can like just click, you know, you just select what events you want to listen to. Uh, and then it was like little boop, 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 little circles of things that can happen and little filters. So like, oh, if it, this event is the fourth event, let's do this. If it's between, you know, four and seven, let's do this. Um, and I was just like, this is insane. Like sometimes I'm just <laughs> like, this was too easy. So I think I've ended up building. So we're not sending SMS yet. I built an MVP where we're actually just pushing all of the messages that we would have sent to a Slack channel so I can get a little bit of a feel how this will feel for customers. And we and we turn on smart retries from Stripe that will try eight times. So uh, it's like taking a while to actually, you know, get people into the flow where it happens on the fourth time because I'm still on the, on the old flow. But the whole thing <laughs> was done in an hour. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. 
And I would not have coded that in an hour. Let me tell you that I'm not that of a speedy developer. So, but while I was in there, I was thinking about your workflow builder because it's basically the same, right? It's a canvas and yep. you have little uh, connectors and you have little, I don't know what we call nodes and you connect them together. And there were some, you know, edge cases where I'm like, oh, I have to do this before I do that. Otherwise, like my filters are gone or uh, when right. I do something and I had to like, re and that's the thing that annoys me when working with with no code and low code sometimes is that if you don't do it exactly right, like you lose something you kind of already coded or configured, I guess, and then you have to do it again. But I mean, even though I had to do it again, because I'm not that familiar with make, I was still done in an hour. So it was maybe right. like a little bit less fun. <laughs> well, it was fun, <laughs> but a little bit more annoying when I was like losing my work, but I still saved, I don't know how many hours. Um, so me and make, we're becoming friends. Nice. Yeah. You should probably build a make integration at some point as well. Yeah. And I think yeah. they become, I just looked quickly at their um, integration documentation and it seemed um, like fairly straightforward and pretty well documented now. Um, mm -hmm. I think like the hard part is that, not the hard part. But you'll have to specify everything that your API can return because, like, if if you're able to click on it, even if there are no data coming through, which I think is smart because I've used other tools like this where if there is no data coming through on mm -hmm. some sort of key, you don't see the key, and you're like, well, I can't make the rest of this no code integration if I can't select this key, even though there wasn't data in right. that key on the last last go. So it's probably like a little bit of a cumbersome, like boilerplatey. To like make sure mm. you have all of those in place. But other than that, I think it was fairly, um, it looked fairly straightforward. Um, but it was yeah, fun. Yeah, I think it makes sense to check it out again. Yeah. Uh, so I bailed that out. And then now we're just waiting for it to trickle in on Stripe, uh, you know, and not Stripe, Slack. Um, and then when we're confident that people won't get like super spammed, uh, even though when your payment has failed, I failed for the fourth time. We yeah 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 uh, <laughs> you deserve to be spammed right <laughs> <laughs> you deserve to be spammed I talked to a friend of the show or like at least a friend of ours um, and we were talking we were actually talking about something else and then she started talking about this and that's when I came my ID for this SMSs came up but she was talking about something I would call like spite driven <laughs> <laughs> development because there was a customer that hadn't paid and then like. Just like now I'm building this banner that will like grow and get like redder and redder mm -hmm, and redder mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. like turn off and every employee who's in here will see that, you know, payment hasn't happened. Um, and it's like, it was not on the roadmap. You know, was it the most important thing? Don't know, but like it was the most important thing for that person right then. Um, and yeah. it got built. And that's when I was nice. like, oh, I don't know why that triggered SMS for me, because that's not the same as a banner at all. But um, then I was like, oh, we could do SMS. Because our issue, as I've said before, is like, we can't turn off access. We'll have to get people to go and like reclaim the bike. Um, so we really, really want them to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah, but we do have cool. this person who goes and steals bike back from theft thieves. So we can oh, interesting. Employ, yeah, so we could employ That's him cool. to steal back bikes that haven't been paid. How uh, how does that work? I want to know more. Or are you not allowed yeah. to tell details? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is pretty public, is that we now have um, uh, air tags in most of the bikes mm, connected to okay. the customer's phone. So then the customers um, just screenshot continuously and let us know where their bike is. Uh, and then this guy is like just like going there and and <laughs> looking for it. Um, and we've recovered, I think, most of the bikes. Um, the last bike, though, <laughs> was not in good condition. Uh, it was like all the parts were just like in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> well at least you found all the parts i guess <laughs> i think like most like probably they stole something right but we we don't know exactly right. what but it works pretty well i think most i don't know i think they're hard to resell because we have the branded logo you know it's it, it's pretty yeah. obvious that it's like not supposed to be sold i guess <laughs> yeah because when we sell them out of the fleet we we remove all of the branding so as long as there are you know, there's branding on our bikes, then 
it's not supposed to be sold to somebody else. Right. And I mean, they could take off the branding, I guess, but I don't, I haven't gone much into that side of the business. The, 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 the founders know a lot more about, um, more about this and like the after sale value and how this, you know, the right. thieves operate. And um, I'm trying not to get involved in every aspect of, <laughs> of the business. <laughs> sure. Makes sense. Yeah. I started practicing. Is it a me problem or is it a you problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good practice. Then most of the problems are probably not a you problem. <laughs> no, they're, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting better and getting better and not being stressed out uh, about things like this whole launch now with um, Framer plugins, where I think I would have been a lot more stressed out just like a couple of years ago. But now I was like, okay. Right. And then you can have, you get a feel. It's like, oh, is it the, like, is the deadline end of day? Like, really though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like. <laughs> you get a feel for that. Obviously, it depends a little on what you're launching. But for us, the public launch has never been the day where, like, people started rushing in and, like, started using it. Sure, we made a big, like, fuss and everyone was liking stuff and retweeting and Stuff like that was, but it's never been like we got a huge influx of trials or something like that. Because I, I guess it's just not, we're not that kind of product. And I guess our setup probably also is that type of product. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's still like it's it's a change that's been happening over, and I think this is just like a getting older thing. But I think before I would have maybe not gone to my horse you know, my horseback riding class on, on Wednesday, because I was like, Oh, I should put more time in. Or I went to had a spa weekend with a friend this weekend and the same thing. Like I could have put more time in, but I also need to do these things for myself. Otherwise, you know, there, there will be no, no energy in the next or in the following months. Um, and I've gotten much better to be like, no, I'm just, I'm like, that is first priority. And then this is second priority and I'll do my best, but I'm not going to, push on the like cost now on the um, i'm not going to sacrifice my health anymore yeah. <laughs> for yeah. for these things um makes sense and and it's nice to just like feel like you know just be like more relaxed and all of that so cool mature <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i guess that's it yeah, I guess that's it. Um, was nice chatting to you again. Uh, <laughs> it's a miracle we actually made a re like made it to this recording by because I feel like we <laughs> rescheduled this a couple of times. <laughs> yes, because funnily enough, I was working on this plug plugin last Tuesday and completely forgot, <laughs> and <laughs> I haven't done that in a while <laughs> because you texted me. And I was like, has it been two weeks? Like in my mind, it had not <laughs> been two weeks. I was just like, it because I usually have like a feel like it's coming up. But I was, those two weeks were in my mind one week. And I thoroughly had not, I didn't realize it'd been two weeks. So yeah, That's well, we made happen. it. We made it. And now I'm going to head to the boat. Woohoo! Enjoy Ooh. your time on the boat and um, yeah, you. talk to you in two weeks or so. Yeah, or so. <laughs> See you around the interwebs. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.